Marco Rubio is becoming his own man by taking on Jeb Bush. Jeb Bush is becoming a little confused, trying to carve out his own niche in the Republican race. Nancy Pelosi has risen from her Beltway hideout, spouting the same old doom and gloom for her foes. Martin O'Malley will indeed challenge Hillary Clinton. And Mr. Burns has quit The Simpsons in a contract dispute. Never fear, Simpson, it's all falling into place. Or even Ned Flanders will be comfortable. I'm at Berliner. This is the hard line for Thursday, May 14th, 2015. The Secretary General is concerned about the crisis evolving in the Adaman Sea and Straits of Malacca, where several thousand people are believed to be stranded on smugglers' boats. He is alarmed by reports that some countries may be refusing entry to votes carrying refugees and migrants. The members of the Security Council condemned the violent unrest in Burundi and specifically condemned those, both those who facilitate violence of any kind against civilians and those who seek to seize power by unlawful means. Amtrak's heartbroken for what happened here. The men and women of Amtrak accept their responsibility seriously. We know that we have a team here that work together to help us, to help the families, to be sensitive, to understand what needed to be done. And we've done that. And that Republicans have Are you really going to ask such a stupid question? Listen, you know, they started this yesterday. It's all about funding. It's all about funding. Well, obviously, it's not about funding. Some The, the train was going twice the speed limit. Uh, adequate funds were there. No money has been cut from rail safety. There are now eight people dead following the Philadelphia train disaster, and while initial signs point to human error, there is plenty of reason to question America's travel infrastructure, especially when you consider the technology not only exists that could have possibly saved these people, but it's already in use in at least one American city and isn't due to be installed in this northeastern corridor until the end of 2015 at the earliest. Hard questions in. Let's welcome Chairman of the Subcommittee on Transportation and Public Assets and member of the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, representing Florida's 7th District, Republican John Micah. Congressman, thanks for being here. Hey, good to be with you this afternoon. It is so much money that has been spent on Amtrak over the years, yet there still is equipment that is not there that might have been able to save these people, and yet the Democrats want even more money, Congressman. Don't we have to tell them it's time to put this waste to an end, start spending it right, making this part of the infrastructure work? Well, uh, that's correct, and it's time really um, to take the United States from uh, the position of a third-world passenger rail uh, system with a Soviet-style operator, Amtrak, that has a monopoly on service into the 21st century. We keep falling further behind. Congress has seen money that they give to Amtrak, uh, the, the waste uh, and abuse is uh, is off the charts, and they're reluctant to give them any more, but they continue to hold a monopoly on passenger rail service, and uh, we're stuck uh, in neutral. What will it take, then, to get us out of neutral, Congressman? Well, uh, it's unfortunate. Sometimes an accident does uh, get people's attention, but um, I think, uh, well, the first thing, Obama took $10 billion. Remember he was going to do high-speed rail? Uh-huh. And I, I, was, I thought, wow, what a great opportunity for the United States. The only quarter in which we have the potential for uh, doing something, and Amtrak and the taxpayer's own, is from Washington, D.C. to Boston, 600 miles. The rest of Amtrak all runs on private freight rail, which is maintained by them. The only asset that we own of track or Amtrak is in the Northeast Quarter. It has the connections, it has the service, it has the population density. Instead, Obama took billions and billions and put it between Fresno and Bakerfields, where there's nothing but vegetable and cattle, well, we, uh, to build a, a so-called high-speed rail. Put some in from Chicago to St. Louis. It's going to go 60 miles an hour. It's a joke. He's uh, He squandered the money. I've only got about 45 seconds left then. How despicable is it that the Democrats are still looking for money when we have, and they're doing it just a day after people are dead? Well, uh, they don't want to do the right thing. 
Uh, we've got to end Amtrak's monopoly. The private sector will invest to funds if given the opportunity. They've done it around the world, um, and there are plenty of examples that we can uh, learn by. Um, and get investment, not to squandering public tax taxpayer dollars. Ten seconds. Do you think that this will actually get them moving now? Um, I'm not overly optimistic. Uh, they they like big government uh, programs that are expensive. The fact you had to sit there and wait to come the answer, I knew exactly what was happening when you were giving that answer because we have heard this story all before and it's unfortunate because in Los Angeles they have a system that actually stops the trains, the same one that could have stopped the trains here, but it just is not in use. Congressman John Micah, we thank you so much for taking a couple of minutes to be with us. We will continue to follow this story. Good to be with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it is indeed something that we must continue to watch because it's working in other places. On to the next stepping stone in the Philly Amtrak wreck. Families preparing to bury loved ones, some injuries that may never heal, and a government-controlled entity that may have once again shown incredible negligence. Our guest has been practicing law in Philadelphia for more than 20 years at the firm Joseph Rollo & Associates, author of an op-ed for Friday's Philadelphia Daily News, that finds plenty of blame to go around in this accident. Welcome Christine Flowers to the hard line. Christine, thanks for being here. Hi, Ed. It's great to be back. Thanks for asking me. Christine, let's discuss, first of all, the fact that Amtrak is owned 51% by the United States government. We still have to wait for the investigation to play its course. But what does that say legally, then, for people going after the U.S. government when and if they do get to the lawsuit phase? Well, it's... It's it's difficult. It's it's complicated because, as you know, in 2008, Congress passed the Railway Protection Act, which they had intended to implement certain policies and procedures that would prevent just this type of accident from occurring. Amtrak never implemented the uh, the, the uh, positive train reaction. They didn't put that into uh, implementation. And so you could say that the government actually has met its burden. The government went a good bit of the way to try and protect passengers. And Amtrak, the entity itself, didn't do enough to complete the, the, the initiative that was uh, started and motivated by government reaction. So we have to wait then, of course, for the investigation to play out here. Two minutes we have left. There's something else that comes in here. The ghouls seem to be out here, at least automatically. It's scary to see what's happened here because now we have the Democrats already looking for more money and a Philadelphia attorney who's playing ambulance chaser. First, to your point, and in the op-ed in Friday's Philadelphia Daily News, the Democrats just asking for more money right on the heels of eight people dying. Well, the, I, I think that the ghoulish and the upsetting part about this was the politicization of the, the deaths of five people, six people, seven people now today, and such a huge tragedy because immediately after the accident occurred on Tuesday night, you started hearing Democratic operatives and, and liberal pundits talking about how we needed to talk about infrastructure, we needed to invest, and the Republicans were stonewalling because they hate President Obama, when then the investigation indicated that it was actually hyperspeed, 106 mile per hour trains that were the proximate cause of the accident. So I find that to be ghoulish. I find that to be particularly disgusting. Um, and also, and I know you're referencing this, there is a Philadelphia attorney, unfortunately, Philadelphia lawyer has has a an unfortunate connotation and I think this attorney has fully merited that connotation in having television ads which are soliciting family members who might want to file lawsuits against either the government or Amtrak. It's His name by the way because I know you don't want to say it I certainly will Dean Weitzman it's my Philly lawyer and actually he had a press release out on the 13th already telling television stations that he was out and he would be looking for those people who wanted to find legal representation. That's despicable. I apologize. I apologize on behalf of my profession and on behalf of the good attorneys out there who would never think of stooping as low as this ambulance chaser, literal ambulance chaser, is, uh, is, is doing. And it's completely legal what he's doing. Oh, sure. Ethical, moral, no, not at all. They're completely legal, you're indeed, but... Uh, on the other sides, you're exactly right as well. I want to remind everybody, too, your op-ed is Friday in the Philadelphia Daily News. Read it. It makes some excellent points about where this investigation went, where maybe it should not have gone. Christine, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Ed. It was a pleasure. Stay here, because the fastest 60 minutes of news goes to the political animal next.